Why? Everybody's making a phone call, right? So it doesn't have to damage the whole network to become inoperable, right? Okay. Good, good situation. So now we're kind of stuck. We're spread out all over the valley. Uh, so how can we, now let's start developing a plan. How can we arrange the technology which we have to help us contact our loved ones at home in this box, this area? How do we get there? We have cell phones. We have Okay, we any type of mobile. What else? Computer, email. Sure, sure. Let's start thinking here. Okay, if our cell phones don't work because we can't get a signal, or because more likely they're all clogged with other people, text messaging. Uh, try to get on the internet with a Wi-Fi. Which may use, which uses different technology, the smartphones, do Facebook, right? There's other technologies that we have available to us. Use them. We can use a landline. When people are all on their cell phones, use a landline. I have my old-fashioned telephone. Have some of these in your home, hooked up and operational. Have them available to you, because if power goes out. How many times have you ever got on the phone and called your neighbor? Is your power out? Why is that? Those phones don't use the electric phone. They use power that comes from the transmission lines. Right? They don't plug into the wall, the normal outlet. Right? So have some of these available. Put them in the back room so nobody sees it. <laughs> right? I understand that. That means your wireless phones that you have in the house. What happens if the power goes out with those? Cordless goes dead. Cordless goes dead. They become bookends, right? Uh, fancy dancy button bookends. So have something like this available. So we're now out. That would also mean most likely there are landlines available in different stores, different businesses, right? So, so start thinking. Use every piece of technology that's available for you to use. Use it. I would use a text message over a cell phone call because a text message uses less bandwidth, which means how much data is being transmitted, and it will continually look for a tower until it transmits or times up, which is generally a couple of days. So if you are driving and the cell phone tower where you are is busy, keep driving with a text message, it will finally connect and transmit. Okay? If everybody would use a text message versus a cell phone, we could get more data across easier. But we're used to the cell phone. Okay, you got a comment? Um, where do we get those old phones? And do all homes have the phones? What, what little phones? The old phones. The old phones. The old phones. <laughs> do they not sell them anymore, really? Uh, no, now you just dumped me. <laughs> uh, you don't have an old phone? Mm -mm. Yeah. Well, that, that's cool, I guess. I don't know what to say. Congratulations. You stumped me. I don't know what to say about that. I would maybe find one. Right? <laughs> so if you, if, you, if, you just, if you just plug it into, I mean, like the, yeah, yeah. the jack. Yeah, the phone jack. Okay. There you go. Because both of them don't, don't the other phones usually use both? They use the jack and the electricity, right? Anytime you find a phone that uses the electrical plug, great. I would find one though that just plugs into the wall. Okay. okay. Uh, the other thing is, a cord cordless phone relies on house AC power to run, right. so it goes dead. But that kind of phone, or one you can buy at Radio Shack that's a corded phone that plugs into the wall, even if it has a little transformer to feed certain features, you can usually dial out on them uh, with the power on. So what we're looking for is any type of phone that doesn't require 120 volts AC. I'm, I'm assuming you can still buy some. I, mean, I don't know. That's a good question. You can't. Have we ever reached that part yet in our technology life? One thing you keep in mind, though, is if you are using Comcast or uh, an internet 
phone service, voice over IP, those may not work when the power's off. We're really gonna get into that. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, could you call a neighbor if there's, if there's something missing? You can't call directly to, to your own home. Right? Can you call a friend who can run over and see? Right? Other people in your personal network, the people that you know, could help transmit by person to person to person some information. So we, we really need to remember that our goal here is to get the information to family members, people who we want, right? It's not going to be instantaneous usually, but we wanted to get there. And so our communication, when we do talk to somebody, short, simple, don't need to tell a personal story, right? In an emergency, facts are important, feelings are not, okay? How do you feel about the earthquake? I really don't care. When we talk to these guys, command centers, EOCs, they really don't care. Are you alive? Is your family member alive? How's your house? Right? So the, the type of communications are just as, or what we say are just as important as what technology we use. So please keep that in mind. Okay, please keep that in mind. All right. How are we doing on time? Okay. Okay. So now let's let's talk a little bit about some of the technology I have up here on the table. We get a little bit about the, the old fashioned telephone. Uh, I always keep I keep two of them in the house. Actually I have three. I keep them in the house for the very simple is a couple of reasons. One the hands receiver, you know, the walkabouts, they don't get lost. I always know where this one is. Uh, two, it'll operate when the power's out. And three, it's nostalgic, right? You just love it. You just love the cord. Uh, of course, you always have the old standby cell phone, right? In the day, this was the top line technology. It's beautiful. Uh, so keep a cell phone. Handy. Most of us have one. Uh, if you have a smartphone, learn how to use its features. If you have internet access, learn how to access the Facebook or the social networks online. Uh, you learn how to use the different technologies of communications with that cell phone. So are you using a Wi-Fi? Are you using the minutes or the data plan? Right? How is it using, uh, how is it communicating with the outside world? That's important to know because we have more options. Right, we need to know those kind of things. Now, not all of us have a smartphone. Right? So what you do have, learn how to operate it to its most capable capabilities, or capabilities, right? Uh, this is an FRS radio, uh, family radio is what this is. Uh, a lot of times in this stake and other stakes I'm aware of, communications from the home or to the block captains and to the block captain to the command center is usually using an FRS radio. In my neighborhood, we use FRS radios. Uh, these are good. Uh, I always have one in my car. Uh, my wife has one in her car. Uh, we have some at home. Uh, on the box, it says, this is good for five miles. Who believes that? <laughs> Tell me what FRS stands for. Family Radio Service. Okay, Family Radio Service. FCC granted a small block of frequencies uh, for this unlicensed, multi-purpose frequency to be used. Okay, its maximum output's a half a watt. That's how much power it can generate and transmit on. The antennas are generally short and stubby, uh, and so it's generally good. In the field tests that I've done, and other field tests that I know other people have done, in an urban setting like this, where it goes through houses, so line of sight's important, 